But about three and a half years ago, we decided to review what the past 30 years and to position African cables to remain relevant for the next 30 years in high voltage cable manufacturing. And in undergoing that market evaluation, there were four key issues that came up. The first of those, that increasingly our customer base required a complete turnkey solution that included design, manufacture, installation, commissioning and after sales service and maintenance services that go with that. Second of all, as the South African economy was growing, there was an increasing need to have ever increasing load capacities on single circuits that were required. Thirdly, and quite closely linked to the second, was over the next 30 years, there is an increasing expectancy that higher voltages would be required within our distribution networks, specifically at 275 kV, but in certain instances even up as high as 400 kV. And fourthly and finally, the African continent was opening up, and if we as South African manufacturers wanted to retain our mantle as being the best manufacturers in Africa, we had to make sure we had the product range, the capability and the cost base to make sure we could compete with the best of the rest of the world going to take a fight to us within Africa. And when we did the analysis on those criteria, it was clear to us that tinkering with our current capability or just making technology changes in our current capability would not, would not make us relevant over the next 30 years. So the decision was taken and there was a fundamental step change in technology and capability requirement in South Africa to maintain the high voltage capability that we had on the African continent. Well, I think that this new um, high voltage cable line uh, has benefited from a number of uh, measures that we've introduced under the Industrial Policy Action Plan. Firstly, we have designated uh, uh, electricity transmission lines. 90% uh, of the uh, components have to come from locally manufactured sources. Uh, and uh, that is uh, something which has benefited them. They've also benefited from the rollout of the Renewable Energy Program, uh, which has uh, created a demand for their products. Uh, we're also investigating a, a tariff uh, and uh, we're stepping up our work on looking at substandard products which are competing unfairly with, uh, with their facilities. But we've said that uh, in addition to that, what we are looking at is to support companies to become competitive. Uh, and so uh, this uh, particular investment has benefited from the Manufacturing Competitiveness Enhancement Program uh, to the tune of 45 million Rand. So the new facility which uh, we opened this morning uh, has uh, been a facility which is a product of our work on a number of fronts, but very directly from the support which we provided under the Manufacturing Competitiveness Enhancement Program. So um, I think it's a, an example in microcosm of uh, how manufacturing has been able to make progress with the support of the various uh, facilities that government has provided to support manufacturers over the last five years.